Hey everybody, my name is Alicia Israel and I'm the founder of AI Digital Suite and I'm really honored to be hanging out on the Online Prosperity Show where we are talking about how you can start a business online. We're talking about copywriting, we're talking about Facebook ads, we're talking a tiny bit about music and hanging out and really enjoying each other's company. So press play, hang out, it's great to chat. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today we've got Elisha. Elisha, my man, how are you going? I'm doing well, man. Thank you so much for having me here. And thank you for hosting me on your show. <laughs> Great stuff. Now, obviously, um, viewers, as an entrepreneur that you probably are at the moment, you know, you really need to put your message out there so that your business is profitable and enjoyable. Now, this is the time when you need experts like Elisha that are, um, you know, copywriters and that have an artistic flair to actually bring your message so that people can actually understand what you do, who you do it for and why they should care. So obviously copywriting is a process of writing all that advertising material that you see every time you um, see a Facebook ad or every time you see a text on a brochure or a billboard, any website, some emails and a lot of advertisement, all of that has been the work of a word artist or a salesman in print as they call them in the, in the, in the market there. So that's the reason why we've dragged Elisha all the way um, so that he can give us a glimpse of what happens in his day-to-day -day life, how he helps his clients, and um, you know how you two can benefit from his services so you can have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Now, Elisha, did I say any of that right? Uh, all of it, but if you don't mind a little bit of clarity, um, with the pronunciation of the name, it's actually Alicia. So Alicia. it's from the book. <laughs> yeah, thank you though. Um, uh, but everything else was completely spot on. And with the name, it's from the Book of Prophets in the Old Testament. And I, you know, my mom chose it because Alicia was always identified as a student. And that's, you know, a really beautiful lesson for me going forward. But thank you so much for having me here. Thank you for the wonderful introduction. And um, I'm really happy to hang out. Too easy. Now, obviously, Alicia, my bad for not having uh, <laughs> explained your name right. It's right in front of me there. And there's one other thing. Somebody's name is usually um, someone's favorite thing to listen to. So obviously, that's the reason why you brought that up. Now, if you're an entrepreneur and if you are putting stuff out there, customers also want to hear the sound of their name and that's the reason why they then uh, purchase and then they then buy from you now tell us a little bit about how you actually connect with customers through copy well I had this great line I run a couple of mastermind groups and we were talking about copywriting in the group and the line that came out of my mouth was if you're not doing customer research you're not writing copy you're writing fiction so it's really important when you're writing your copy that before you ever sit down to write, you have a really strong idea of who your customer or client is and who your ideal customer, customer or client is. And then from that point, making sure that you do thorough customer research so that you know who this person is, what their needs are, what their interests, their desires, their pains, uh, their demographics and their behaviors are. So that from that point, when you sit down to start writing, you have a thorough understanding of who this person is, so then therefore you're able to speak directly to them. Okay, how does that help a business once you know who your customer is and once you know what their demographics are? Well, it helps a ton. I mean, the fact of the matter is, if you're trying to talk to everybody, you're like, it's highly likely that you're not going to end up speaking to anybody. Your message will be too broad, it won't have enough specificity. So. Once you start to have an understanding of who your ideal customer, who your ideal client is, you, you suddenly know where to look. You, you suddenly can think, where does this person hang out? What are they interested in? What are they going to, uh, you know, even simple, what kind of business is it? You know, I know for myself, one of my niches is providing support to other agencies. And as soon as I got that clarity a while back, I immediately knew who to contact because it was built into the structure of it. So when you have an idea of who you provide support to, 
it allows you to speak directly to them rather than be, just throwing it out there for everyone. Great stuff. All right. So copywriting isn't what it used to be, you know, uh, defining a copywriter and what a copywriter actually does. Um, you know, the line has become all squeaky. Can you tell us what your daily work or what do you come across in your daily schedule as a copywriter? What sort of work are you doing? Sure. So the primary use for where I'm using this at this time is in the Facebook ads environment. So the people that I work with generally will come to me because I also do campaign management with Facebook ads. Uh, and so they come to me and they're looking for a combination of somebody who can both manage and optimize their campaigns through split testing while also writing their copy for them. So what that will go, what that will be like, we'll have an extensive conversation. We'll identify and extract basically all the information about who it is that we're talking to. We'll write a rough draft of the copy and then we'll go into the ad environment and start to split test all of the different elements of the advertisement, starting with an image. And then once we've gotten a solid version of the image and we know this is the one that's performing best, then we can start to split test the copy, the targeting, as well as depending on the campaign, we can even split test the campaign uh, itself and what the campaign objective is. Uh, and so that's an example of where copy can be used. Uh, you know, I, I was offering brand management packages for a while. So with some of my clients, I apply copywriting theory when I'm like, I have one client who I do three daily posts on Instagram for. So I do a lot of copywriting theory with them there. Uh, it's likely that as my business continues to grow, it will expand to sales pages. It will expand to email sequences. Um, I've done a fair amount of audits for websites as well, where people show me their website and I'll do a comprehensive review as well as an edit of the copy on their website. But you know, it, it really, these are all different vehicles. Each one of these are different vehicles. And so it's really important to recognize that if the fundamentals are in place, if you have a solid copywriting formula, if you have your customer research in place, you can apply this theory to any medium. Understandable. So you did mention at some point you were you were helping your customers with, um, you know, their social media marketing and social media visuals. Does it um, is it imperative that a copywriter that people might hire needs to know the basics of design? Uh, I would say in today's environment, I, it's a good idea for somebody who is in the online space to have an understanding of how all the different pieces fit together. Uh, However, if somebody is not a designer and they are, let's say they're a writer and they're a specialist as a writer, it may be more productive to them to partner with somebody who has spent their life learning design um, and maybe even go and have some consultations and say, why is this good design? Why is this bad design? Take a course, learn a little bit. But really, you know, it's always a good idea to double down and focus on your strengths. So if you're, if you're a strong writer, then create collaborations with the people who have this, the other strengths and fill them, fill that in around you. And that way you can have a much more focused and powerful team that potentially with the team element can support a wider range of clients rather than a single individual underperforming in multiple realms because they're trying to do everything. Great stuff. Now creativity on the online space, obviously people are coming to the internet to get information. And if the internet has now become a content based platform, then Copywriters are obviously, you know, keeping the internet engine running. Now, for a person to consistently churn out content and, um, you know, be on top of their game, they've got to be creative. What is it that you do to keep yourself busy and also uh, in, a, in a whole creative and artistic space? I think the really important part is honoring process. And, you know, I'm still a bit on the younger side. I'm 26. Uh, so, you know, honoring the process that I'm learning over the years, uh, you know, as I, as I'm getting older, I'm finding myself waking up earlier. It's something as simple as, you know, making a cup of tea in the morning and, and, you know, doing a brief meditation and, you know, getting into my body for a little bit and exercising. And then, you know, really just sitting down and creating the space in my day to do this specific thing. So this week I did this, uh, exercise where, um, this past week, I did this exercise where I wrote down everything that I did every day for the week. And that gave me a ton of clarity because 
in two ways. One, it showed me what, what, I, what I was doing that wasn't of particular value to me. And it also showed me like when I would sit down and I'd be like, okay, I know I'm going to do this in the next three hours because that's kind of how my day is, is happening. And I would write all of it down and it was much easier for me to, to know and to sit down and be like, this 15 seg minute segment is specifically for this. So when those 15 minutes are happening, nothing else is going on. This hour is specifically for, you know, developing this concept as well as writing the article around it. So all I have to do during that time is brainstorm and then sit down and write it once I have the concept. And, you know, having that sense of structure and that, you know, when you're getting to it, you know, well, this is the time for this specific task I found to be really helpful as well. And I think that's something that as my process continues to deepen and evolve, uh, I'll, I'll see more and more structure in my day so that I have to make less and less decisions and can be much more within the actual process and allow the process to bloom that way. Understandable. Right. So obviously you've taken time to figure out what you're doing at particular times of the day. And <clears throat> you've also noticed that you've got recurring um, activities or recurring tasks. You can actually use an app called Time Spread that you can get in the app store that you can actually, um, you know, start, you know, demarcating what are those activities that are actually money making, productive, etc., etc. I use it and I live by it there. Okay. Beautiful. So, Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I was still trying to really get out to the whole creativity side because you've got to be telling stories. You've got to be innovative, um, you know, as a uh, copywriter. Where do you get most of your inspiration and how does it all come together? So I would say <laughs> the, I've spent years as a musician. And so over the years, I, I was in the music world for about seven or eight years full time, both as a self managed musician as well as an event coordinator. And I found it really necessary due to that dual role to, to really focus in on my project and create revenue elsewhere. And so a lot of it just comes from the motivation of being true to myself and being authentic and, you know, creating a business that allows me to, to eventually, once it's, once I get it to the scale that I want to, to live the life that I'm envisioning so that I can have the time and energy for what I'm most passionate about. So, so that really, when, when looking at motivation for what I'm building, that really helps. But in terms of like the creative inspiration, a lot of people think that creativity and inspiration is this flash in a pan thing that just kind of shows up and it's like, boom, hi, I'm inspired. But the reality is it doesn't work like that at all. Like I'm somebody who has been a creative since my mid teens and it's never about, I mean, sometimes you get the flash in the pan, but I found that the best work happens when you're two to three weeks into dailies and you've been doing your work every single day for an extended period of time and then suddenly you wake up and you do your work and you follow the process and then at the end of the day you're like holy wow that was a really good day and I don't even know how it happened <laughs> uh, so it's really just a matter of showing up and consistently and showing up for oneself and um, the, the combination of those two can create inspired moments in a way that is well beyond the flash in the pan because the flash in the pan, they'll do it every now and then. But when you have that consistency, it's just, it's potent. <laughs> Great. So Alicia, now you keep talking about the process. Can you just give us a brief outline of what the process is? Uh, the process is different for every single individual. Uh, but it is basically, uh, you know, for myself, uh, it is just following the path that's in front of me and honoring my own needs and listening to my body and eating healthy and living clean and doing my work and, and being a good member of community. Uh, and, you know, helping to, to move us forward towards a beautiful future and providing for those that I love, you know, that's my process. And so it may be different for, for other people, you know, for some people, they, they may have different motivators. They may have different goals. They may have uh, a different way of, of getting in tune with themselves. You know, you know, for some people, it might be playing basketball for a half hour every day. For some people, it might be walking the dog. For some people, it might be jumping up and down, going to the gym. 
it may be meditation, it may be swimming. It doesn't really matter as long as somebody has that, that thing which allows them to like, deeply connect with themselves so that they can live from that space of authenticity. That's really the process. And so it's so variable for everybody else, but I just, you know, it'll, it'll eventually emerge from, from a place of truth when somebody honors their own needs and listens to their own voice and their own guidance, they will find that they will naturally be, uh, be begin to have their own process. And, you know, one of the most important steps for this is to also, as well as seeking inner guidance, to seek external guidance, to find mentors, to find teachers, to find guides, people who are farther along on our path than we are so that we can model the success as well as get guidance and ask for guidance when needed. So combining those, that deep personal inner guidance, as well as seeking external guidance from peers and inspirations um, allows for for a really accelerated growth in a way that um, really, you know, uh, and then I guess one other element would just be paying attention to the details. Um, and um, when you add all those in and add in an element of consistency, it's, it's really begins to be an unstoppable force. Understandable. Well, thank you so much for your time. And if you're watching this episode right now, you're probably wondering how, um, you know, you can get um, help from people that are experts like um, Alicia there. If you could help us with how people can get a hold of you there, Alicia. Sure. Uh, so I have my website, aidigitalsuite.com. And if somebody is interested, they're more than welcome to follow me on social media. I'm guessing this video will be passed around on social media. So, um, you know, if I'm tagged, feel free to reach out, uh, Alicia Israel. Um, I have a personal Instagram, Alicia Israel IG. Uh, and my business has an Instagram, although it's not too active right now, uh, AI Digital Suite on Instagram. If you're interested in the music, it's Sacral, Sacral Crown, S-A-C-R-A-L, space C-R-O-W-N on most platforms. And uh, I do also have a case study, which if you want, I can send you the link that talks about how I opt, how, <laughs> copy, uh, how you can optimize ads um, from 2.44 per link click down to 35 cents per link click. And then just as a, an additional piece of information with image split testing after that case study, I managed to actually bring it down to 24 cents per link click, but I'd be happy to send you all of these links as well as that case study link so that you can um, share it and uh, with your audience when this publishes. Understandable. Well, thank you so much for all that information, for your time and definitely your expertise in this uh, whole sect because as we all know, as entrepreneurs, people are coming to the internet to get information. And if your brand is not providing that information, then you're missing out on reaching out to people that are supposed to know you, like you, and trust you. And most of the time, all of that information is usually on our websites. And web copy is usually all is basically the bones of a really good website. Now, it is at the core that actually guides people through the site and tells them, you know, what they need to do and what they need to know about your services. And it also serves to convert those readers at that landing page to actually become customers and sometimes sell products to them. So words spark engagement. They spark interaction and they spark a conversation. Now, we want to be communicating with our customers so we have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Now, Alicia, thank you so much for your time and your expertise and your knowledge that you just dropped down for us uh, on this episode here. And thank you so much, Prosper, for hosting. This has been a really pleasant conversation. And I, I really appreciated the, uh, the cue to chat about the music a little bit. And I really appreciate you letting me bring that into the conversation as well. Too easy, man. <laughs> thank you so much for this. All right. See you, man.